Well, hello, Park Road. Welcome to another episode of Always Reforming. This is your opportunity to hear news and updates on the life of Park Road. And we are back with part two of our series about who is eco. Last week in part one, we talked about reformed. What does it mean to be reformed and to believe in reformed theology? This week, we're dealing with eco's second descriptive word, evangelical. What does it mean to be an evangelical? Uh, And so, Liesl, uh, what is this term evangelical? Well, the word evangelical comes from the Greek word, which means good news. And what is the Greek word for good news? Euangelion. And my daughter Evangeline is named Euangelion Evangeline Good News. Um, So it's been, the word evangelical has been claimed by a lot of groups throughout church history. In American history, around the 1940s and 50s, it was claimed by a wide movement, a big term to apply to a lot of churches, to distinguish that they were theologically orthodox, but they were not as culturally divided, not as um, conflict-oriented as they perceived fundamentalists to be. And now over the decades, it's taken on more meaning to different groups so that it's not so much of a consistent term as it used to be, to the point that Tim Keller wrote an op-ed for The New Yorker asking, is it time to retire the term evangelical? But um, Chris, let's talk about why we chose to keep the name evangelical, because what does it mean in the context of eco? Yeah, Uh, and so it's interesting. Uh, last year at ECO's National Gathering, when we were in Dallas, with mm-hmm. the snowstorm, um, one of the speakers was Walter Kim, the president of the NAE, the National Association of Evangelicals. I forgot this, but Lisa, you reminded me that he answered the question, is it time to retire it, by saying uh, no, because while it may be a contested word here, uh, Christians across the rest of the world still believe in evangelicalism as a concept. And so uh, it's a, a robust term. Uh, the term evangelical, as we use it today, we often think through a definition put forth by a British theologian named David Bebbington. Now, hold on to your hats. This is known as the Bebbington Quadrilateral. It's ridiculous, isn't it? It is. But it's the Bebbington quadrilateral, uh, and so there are four tenets that make up evangelicalism. And the first is adherence to Scripture, that we believe that Scripture is the God-inspired Word of God, that it is authoritative for our lives, and we are thankful and we depend on Scripture for its words of truth. Now, Scripture is not just a rule book for life. We believe that Scripture is all about Jesus Christ. I've said before that uh, Scripture, every single word in Scripture, points us ahead to, talks to us about, or reflects back upon the person and work of Jesus Christ. So we look to Scripture as the inspired, authoritative Word of God, not just as a rule book, but for the way that it points us to Jesus. So, Scripture is the first tenet of the Bevington Quadrilateral. The second tenet is the atoning life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is such a focus and an emphasis on the substitutionary, atoning work of Jesus, uh, that we, sinners, deserve to be the ones nailed to the cross, but Jesus was nailed to the cross in our place. And that is tremendously good news. So, Scripture, focus on the atoning work of Jesus Christ. The third tenet is conversion. Not just that we believe these things intellectually, but that we put our faith in Christ, that we repent, that we turn from sin, we see sin as God sees it, and turn away from sin, turn towards Christ, put our faith in Christ, salvation by God's grace through faith, and trust him as we live God-honoring lives. So, belief in Scripture, belief in the atoning work of Jesus, conversion experience, where we repent of our sin and trust Christ. And then the fourth element is commitment to 
evangelism, to outreach, to proclaiming the news, and that we are sent to go and share the good news. Not a stationary people, but a sent people, sent out to proclaim neighbors, friends. Uh, in more recent years, there's been talk of missions, that we all are missionaries, even in our home communities and home contexts. Uh, so those are the four tenets, the Bevington Quadrilateral, that we use to talk about and think through uh, evangelicalism. Mm. And as we said in the beginning, many of our friends and neighbors and family may have negative understandings of what evangelical means. Yeah. And so why is it important to continue to hold to this name? And why do we not just discard it and say that that is just no longer part of our label? Yeah, yeah. It's true that the term evangelical is viewed differently by different people, even negatively today. Um, but when I look at the Bevington Quadrilateral, I look at commitment to Scripture, the atoning work of Jesus, desire to see conversion, and desire to share the good news— I'm persuaded those are still really, really important, and those are a part of my faith. Um, and so even though there are negative connotations from uh, society at large, it's still a helpful descriptor for, I think, what we believe as followers of Jesus. Uh, and so, yeah, would also say that not time to retire it, but to continue believing with humble zeal what it means to be a true evangelical committed to these four tenets. Mm. Yes, and I've had many conversations with people explaining theologically this is what that term actually means. And it opens up some doors to conversation and sharing the gospel. Yeah, yeah, super helpful. Um, so again, any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Please email us. We're eager to dialogue, buy a cup of coffee and talk. Uh, but that's all we've got for this uh, word, evangelical, and we'll see you again for issue number three, egalitarianism.